Welcome back, everybody, to Raven Star's Witching Hour. This is Solaris Blurvin. My wonderful guest tonight is Rebecca Jernigan. And Rebecca, we have a question from Sindolo in chat. What does what do you think about Antarctica? Oh, what a magical place! Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And and you know, there's a lot of context here. What um, the, the the there's several layers to that. Obviously, mm-hmm. uh, the underground bases uh, that could be one thing. Um, you know, I, I know that there's a lot of people out there that have done some research on Antarctica, and there's there's places in it that you know, if you go on Google Earth, uh, it's blacked out. You can't you can't see it. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, there's there they, there's something there that they don't want the rest of the world to see. That should be enough to tell people that there's something going on, right? In and right. of itself. But every time I have looked at this, and this has been years ago, not just recently but even years ago when I looked at it I always felt like that there was um, some of the humans history is there Mm -hmm. Um, this would be pre-Atlantean times and I think that there would be there's a lot of information there you know this the the earth Antarctica hasn't always been under you know under ice and Mm -hmm. everybody knows that right I mean right uh, different the, we've had pole shifts and climates change and uh, these continents will move and there's all kinds of movements and stuff in there but as far as I'm concerned there's a lot of underground bases there's so a lot of um, we're gonna call it extraterrestrial technology I don't like using the term necessarily as alien but an extraterrestrial uh, <laughs> knowledge and information technology as well as information on who actually has been here I think that there's some craft there. I also think that there's some, for the lack of a better way of saying it, Lars, I'm going to call it a library. I think there's a library of information in there. Um, I think there's also, um, call them creatures, call them peoples, there's remains there as well. Mm-hmm. And that has a lot to do with what's going on. Um, there, you know, there's been a silent battle going on about uh, about Antarctica for a long time. Um, you know, we get back into you know the Hitler days, and you know the United States. They're they're they've always been kind of vying for that spot. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's there's uh, these bases there that um, that they talk about and there's some Russian bases there's some German bases there's some American bases I don't know what else is all there I just think there's a lot of activity going on I think it's stepping up uh, this activity Uh, as a matter of fact just as we were talking about it I was kind of shown some submarines coming out from underneath there Um, and yeah I thought that was kind of interesting that just kind of one of those little flyby visions (laughs) comes and goes there you go so I think there's just a lot going on. I don't know if there's anything specific uh, other than that, that that they wanted me to answer for them. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe you can chime in with that as well. Well, actually, I agree with everything you're, you're mentioning right there. You know, I've mentioned it before on air that it reminds me of a jump point for anti-gravity. In other words, that's what I get is a connection to anti-gravity and also something with um, being able to leave uh, from that point, jump point to um, another point in the space-time continuum. That's just what I get. But yeah, I yeah. agree with you. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, Stargates. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. I mean, I've always been drawn to Antarctica. I have to tell you, I, I really love to go um, just to see what I feel just by getting out there. I know it's really cold. That's the only thing I really don't dig that kind of cold. But, yeah, very fascinating indeed. And, you know, what's interesting is we have this heritage that is is unspoken and, and is cloaked to so many levels. But yet we still remember through our consciousness and our subconscious and our celestial, what I call cellular memory. Oh, I agree. There's places that I have went um, that, you know, all I feel like I could do is just sit here and I could just stop right here and just live right here. Just right here in this space, never never leave it. Uh, there's been a couple of places like that. And I, it's just like the warm fuzzy. So you, you know, if you've never been there before, that there's a connection to it. So you begin to... Right. What, if you begin to explore that, just allow that to organically happen for you, you're going to find that there's something in your memory banks, again, and those memory banks can be just the things that you were talking about, Can just you just never know when it's going to trigger that kind of visual thing for you or sense of knowing or however that information comes to the individual. Mm-hmm. And you're going, oh, yeah, 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 now I know, yeah, because it's all there, every bit of it, like you said. Absolutely. Yeah, I totally agree. And we have another question from Jerry B. 
Uh, have you ever felt like you were fading back and forth between two timelines? <laughs> That's time, right? <laughs> Every day, right? Oh. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not kidding. It's, uh, <laughs> I've talked about this on my show. I had quite a few shows on this actually about the whole timeline uh, jumping back and forth thing. Um, and, and I'll tell you the story. I don't know if you've heard it, so if I'm being redundant for any of the people out there, I apologize. Okay. Um, I was literally in a Walmart store, and I had a specific thing. I don't go there unless it's just something that I can't get anywhere else where I'm living, right? So I had to go to the Walmart, and I'm there with my friend, and her and I are going up and down the house, and I'm like, you know, something is wrong. I said, it doesn't feel right here. I said, first of all, the prices are too high. I said, this isn't Walmart. The prices are just too high. I said, and they don't have anything. I mean, there's just nothing here. Nothing on the list is here that I'm looking for. And I know it's supposed to be here. I said, okay, something's not right. And it's like, it's almost as if the air becomes, feels different to you. It's like, it's like I call it the dampening field where you can't hear like you would, like if you were here and, you know, in your own space. Sure. It's just, there's just something different. The energy's different. The everything's off just slightly off and yet it looks the same or familiar right so I, I went okay I and I and it dawned on me when I stand there saying that I was like I'm not in the right timeline I've jumped a timeline so I stood there for a minute I took a couple of deep breaths I recognized what was going on went down to the next aisle and everything shifted back to what I call my reality the prices wow. went back down I could find and I was like okay very specific very specific where I could just feel, I could sense that it was that strong. Mm -hmm. And literally every day, every single day, I will run across a, a moment, sometimes they're long moments of timeline shifting in between. Um, and I found myself at times straddling both of them. That happened to me very recently. That's all part of what I call the new norm or all these energies, these new energies that's come in. Mm -hmm. It's it, For some people, I know there, there's there got to be other people out there experiencing it even more so than I am. And, you know, bless their hearts because it, it takes a lot to maintain some mm -hmm. sort of sensibility when you're standing in the middle of a bunch of people and you're going, okay, wait a minute, which one am I on? Yeah, isn't that interesting? Well, we, I've always said we're multidimensional beings living simultaneously. So yeah, in multidimensional yes. reality. So doesn't that make sense? And and what you were talking about was your awareness changed your reality. So as soon as you knew, uh, you changed it. And that just shows you the power of the mind, the psyche, and how we can adapt and change everything in our atmosphere. Yeah, exactly. And I want to share this one last thing with you because this is just, this has only been just a couple of days ago. We had a bunch of storms that come through, gosh, for almost a week off and on. We had these storms. A couple of days ago, the storm came in and I was standing there. I was talking to my friend and I, I was witnessing a thunderstorm with lightning right and it was just flashes and flashes of lightning coming in <laughs> I was looking at them at her and her husband and I was like and they weren't acting like anything was going on and I said do you see that and she said see what and I said do you see all that lightning <laughs> okay no what uh, her husband says no I said okay Wow! So I, I go over and I sit down in in, the, in another part of the room. And I thought, okay, let me let me just change my let me shift out of this and let me just change my perspective. And then I got two more lightning flashes. Mm. And then I got up and left the room. And when I came back, there were no more lightning flashes. Very interesting. It was it was wow. yeah, it was cool and disconcerting at the same time. <laughs> I wonder if you could just kind of phase yourself into another dimension. I mean, maybe you can just kind of journey around, seriously. You know, I actually, I've thought about that, and I thought, okay, but I have to, you have to, I would think you would, might want to take some precautions, because let's mm -hmm. say you, you were able to do that. You might find yourself in a space that you don't want to come back from. Right. Might not, not, might not be a good idea, because then you would be changing everybody else's timelines. Oh, you think so? You might. That's interesting. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, you know, what comes to mind also is we always open up stargates naturally through our own consciousness, in my opinion, anyway. Sure. Or, or whatever we're going to call ascension portals. So I'm always wondering, you know, if that's a way to, when we change our molecular structure through frequency, we can just kind of phase. But yeah, I always thought about that. That's kind of one of my little things. You know, I'd always like to kind of go someplace else for some reason. I just, I've always felt like I've been out of time. 
out of I'm on the wrong timeline, and it's always yeah. You know, well, and yeah. and a lot of that is because you are aware that of the timelines. You are aware of your own multi multidimensionality, and I think sometimes when you're we're looking at that, I think you know there's probably some other line timeline out there where I'm doing something a little bit more than what I'm doing here. You know, we because mm-hmm. we're always doing that to ourselves. We're always thinking we can be more, 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 and we can, but you know. We also have to have some kind of semblance of balance with that as well. So, mm-hmm. but I agree with you. I think. Well, just go over here and trip out for a little while. Maybe I'll come back. Maybe I won't. Well, if you start seeing lightning like that, that's a cue. Like I think that's almost like something opening up for you. So. Oh, it was it was, it was crazy. It was crazy, crazy good, but it was crazy. It was interesting. <laughs> that's mm-hmm. wild. You know, when you said the dampening field too, when you were in the target, that's that's interesting because um, I felt things like magnetic. It feels very magnetic oh. when things are altered. They're funky. Uh, yes, yeah. I can't. I had to quit wearing watches 25 years ago. I even mm-hmm. had to quit using uh, clocks next to my bed. I haven't. I haven't woke up with a an alarm, but maybe two dozen times in the past 15, 20 years. It's a great idea. You know, I always wonder why people live like they sleep next to their iPhones too. And then, of course, I've always wondered about the computers in the bedroom. I don't think that's a good idea, although I know sometimes it's convenient. But that's another thing, also. I, they should probably cover them up. What's your impression of that? Uh, I agree. Um, now, I will tell you is that what um, I have is a friend of mine. She makes Organite. Are you familiar with that? Organ- yeah, Organite. I love Organite. Yes. Yeah, and she made some very specific um, organ pieces for me because uh, she knows, you know, who I am, what I'm about, and I keep those everywhere in mm-hmm. my space. Nice. I've got about ten of them. And most of them are surrounded by my computer, and they're surrounding by my, my cell phone. Nice. Yeah, the Shungite, too. That's a good one also, yep. and I like that. Yep. I still use that. So that helps quite a bit. And then we have another question here. Uh, okay. Let's see, B. Radley, um, question for guests. Are you familiar with the Tesla wristwatch? We were just talking about watches. It was designed by Dr. Robert Becker, Nobel Prize nominee. It's based on technology that produces an energy field that helps the body strengthen and reinforce the, bo- the body's own energy field. You know, I did see a short article on that. N- I don't know enough about it, but I, I remember when I saw the article, came up on one of my news feeds that I have, um, I was in a rush and I didn't get to sit back and look at it, but I remember going, wow, that w- that's cool as long as they don't... Um, the only thing that I get concerned about is because there's, there's a lot of people that take data Mm-hmm. From you that that yep. they wouldn't put the data in there to transmit it to some place it doesn't belong. Yeah. If they would only if they would if they make it where it's where you feel good about it if you you know if you're wearing it that it's not being transmitted somewhere else that it's really just for the human body right for that individual mm-hmm. that would be this utmost coolest thing ever right. Right. Wow, we would all just be going around, you know, everybody must get stoned kind of a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love photons. I'm really big on electricity and energy. I'm an energy. I don't know. I'm just an energy unit. I just love energy. Oh, cool. Well, then, uh, yeah, I used to call my, I call myself an energy sensitive. Uh, oh, that's I'm, nice. I'm, yeah, I'm the same way as that. I want to talk about dampening field mm-hmm. uh, because that this is interesting. This is one of those things that... Um, this was not a timeline. See, it's a diff- there's so the differences sometimes are so subtle. It's kind of hard to d- define where does this category it goes in. Mm-hmm. But it's taken a trip. Uh, I was actually going to see uh, one of my friends, Stuart Swerdlow. He lives in Michigan, and mm-hmm. I was attending one of his seminars that he had. So on the way back, my friend and I went, and on the way back, we're of course we're driving on the expressway, freeway, whatever you want to call it. And there's cars. You know, it's not heavy traffic, but there's cars on both sides of the road. We're driving along, and then all of a sudden, I looked up and I said, there's not a car on the road. No Mm -hmm. cars. You couldn't see anything. Nobody else. Mm -hmm. There was no sound. There was no sound of the car in the car. Mm. Nothing. It was, you look out, and there was all these weird buildings and stuff off into the distance, things that didn't... It's like that picture, what doesn't belong, right? We right, all yeah. heard that, right? Uh-huh. What doesn't belong, that building doesn't belong, that doesn't belong, that doesn't belong. And when those things when those things changed and we got into the this belongs, traffic appeared and the noise appeared. Mm, wow. 
very, very, very odd. And it mm-hmm. was totally creepy. I have to tell you, it was creepy. So what do you think happened, Rebecca? What, what's your impression? There, there was some kind of, I'll call it a technology because I can't say it was magnetic. I can't say it was pure electrical. I don't know exactly what it was. But these buildings and the way that they were set up was, I don't know what they were doing, but it literally was, their cars had to have been there, but we couldn't see them. Mm-hmm. There was some Ooh. kind of technology being used cloaking, maybe? in that area. I, it, that's what I wonder. I wonder, is it, what, is the, is it a cloaking device? It sounds like. Almost. I mean, it was just bizarre. And my friend, she's sitting there and she's the same way. She turns around and looked at me almost the same time I said to her. Do you hear that? No, I don't either. <laughs> I don't hear hmm. nothing. Wow. That's it, fascinating. It was fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Absolutely. Mm. So. That's something that you might want to experience towards like Area 51 or something or even in Utah. But um, but yeah, it tells me that something's going on. You, maybe some experimental technology as you were, you were talking about or cloaking or something. Yeah. But, you know how wow. when you're driving down the freeways, you can see like all the electrical lines that they have for mm-hmm. power for and stuff. Well, there was something like that there but they weren't like the rest of them mm-hmm. and this went on for a couple of miles this wasn't just like a blip blip it wasn't like a little mm-hmm. blip on the screen i kid you not wow that's something to take note of anyway if i wonder if other people have had that experience on that particular part of the road i, I don't know or had that experience at all i'd be you huh. know i've asked the question hey if anybody's you know i'd be interested in hearing your story too Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I touched on that before, too. I don't know if you, you probably had this happen to you, but when you're in airplanes, you can tell between spaces and states and frequency um, of, you know, I can tell when we're hitting certain airspace just by the transmission of the frequency. Yep. Like, um, for example, Colorado has a really strong magnetic field. To me, mm-hmm. it does. It feels like gravity. It feels really heavy. Um, other areas don't feel like that at all. So just curious if anybody else picks up on that or you have. I, yeah, and I know a lot of people that do as well. And I there's times when I get into s- s- some different places and i'll go you know it, the air just feels like i can't even breathe it's just heavy, right yeah just heavy yeah and then there's other times when i i feel like I, my feet aren't even touching the ground mm-hmm. yeah you, you know, know maui has a nice vibe i'm sure you've been there right no i have not I've, oh my gosh I, right. I, I know I'd love to no <laughs> i, I talk about there. this every episode i swear i always talk about maui but yeah you should go definitely take a trip well if i get an opportunity you bet i will i'm serious yeah. i would that's just it's, fabulous very high energy. At least it used to be. I can't say it's still like that, but I bet it is. It still has that beautiful light energy. It's, as soon as you get off the mainland, it's the vibration of the mainland. Once you break orbit with the mainland and you're, you know, off way, um, the Pacific, the Pacific Ocean is a nice, it's a nice kind of a bounce between two different land masses. If you ask me, I mean, it just kind of protects the Hawaiian Islands. So yeah, but I would, I would check it out if I were you. I will do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Those are great questions. I love those questions. Yeah, great questions, guys, in chat. Yeah, continue on if you if you're interested. But yeah, for sure. Um, I was going to ask you if you've ever done much with mind control, or what's your take on that with people and personalities or anything. Have you worked with people who have mind control programs? Yeah, I have. Um, okay, a few, not not a lot, but a few. I have. Um, okay. Mind control is one of those things. Um, I I've actually talked a lot about this on my show. I've had four or five different guests on mm-hmm. uh, with their varying perspectives on what mind control is. Stuart Swerdlow is a big one. Right, yeah. Uh, and then uh, Marie D. Jones was on, and she also had a book out on mind control. Um, oh, my gosh, I can't think of the other guy's name. Um, there was another gentleman that I had on that was also, uh, we hit on the uh, mind control thing. I think it's, a. I think it's, whew, okay, um, for me, the mind control thing is, is um, part of the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. Um, of something that I call the construct. Most people would call it the matrix. Mm-hmm. Um, more people, there's some people that are more susceptible to it than others. Um, we're all mind controlled to a certain degree only because the programming is so old that we don't recognize it as programming. Right. Um, which that's really what mind control is, is programming. But when you're getting into like the uh, super soldier programs and all them and their mind control that's a whole different now we're talking about a whole different technique and a whole different level of mm-hmm. of um, evilness for the lack right. of a better way of saying it um, but mind control does exist um, even you know even even in our everyday life we're controlled like I said to a certain extent but 
the more that you break free from it, the more that you're able to see beyond the illusion of what's being presented here, that this is how our life is supposed to be and this is how the world is supposed to be, um, and this is all you get, right, kind of mentality. Mm-hmm. Um, if you could, The more you get past that, the more you become more self-aware, uh, more consciously aware, um, and tap into that subconscious mind and expand, the more you realize how mind-controlled you are. And you can be the observer as opposed to a participant in most of those areas that are mm-hmm. being mind controlled um, that's it's it's really diabolical it truly is mm-hmm. this this whole control mechanism thing is very very uh, very much a uh, diabolical it's insidious there's no doubt well yeah. I, I, we'll talk about my background sometime when I have time to talk to you but yeah I, I've been interfaced with artificial intelligence and I have um, implant anomalies and things I have a documentary on it so it's horrible with the synthetic telepathy. You know, you're talking about freedom of thought, freedom, freedom of being able to speak, and then you have something interfering with your brainwave activity with, with like what they do, heterodyning. And um, so it's insidious. And um, I, I do see that that transhumanism is kind of lingering in the background, you know, the atmosphere. It's as far as trying to calibrate people to technology to a point where they want to indoctrinate them into this, this new philosophy of transhumanism, which is their electronic God. Right. So that's a different animal and that's concerning. So, So, yeah. And so uh, I think what what I'd like to share with you is is my vision. I had this very because it blends in with what we're talking about here. And I think it's kind of a bridge between uh, the transhumanism that you're talking about and what's going on with the with what's with the whole mind control thing and and what I call the construct. Mm -hmm. Many years ago, um, I was taken in. I was. Sometimes I'm just taken away, and when I say that, I mean I might just be sitting there, and then all of a sudden some experience begins to happen for me. I don't want to say it's a vision because it's an experience. I'm there, I'm doing the work, and I wasn't set out to do this. I was. I might have just been sitting there playing solitaire on my computer for all I know. I might mm-hmm. have been baking a cake. It doesn't matter. But I have these experiences that are that are just spontaneous, and in this experience. Um, I was taken to um, the field of talking heads is, is what I've called it. And what happened was is that I was I was this was in the I was on the earth. I was you know here on this planet. Mm-hmm. And I have to tell you, I felt like it was on the upper north northern part of the west coast. Now why I thought that, I don't know, but that's the energy that I picked up when I was there. Mm-hmm. And in this, I was actually standing um, b- below ground with my eyes just like barely above eye level or ground level, right? And I'm looking out at what I call the field of talking heads. Now, these are these are short posts coming up out of the ground with all these heads on it. Now, are you familiar with like the uh, Easter Island... Uh, mm-hmm heads all those right. things there's some that look like that there's some that look like the old Toltec some that look like the old um, Chinese dragon faces but only they're humanized if you understand mm-hmm. that term so they're all there but they're all wearing the same helmet there's a helmet and that's what's most interesting because this helmet also has on the top of it a cross well I got that this cross was actually a transmitter of some sort Okay, mm-hmm. it's it's like a radio tower, not very tall, but they're all wearing this this uh, almost looks like a Viking helmet in a sense, a uh, Renaissance helmet. It's uh, like hammered iron with a little thing that goes around the back of it. It's kind of bent up, and then a, a mouth guard where you can't mm-hmm. see their mouth, right? But it's got lines in it. It's a lot of different levels of uh, time periods of this helmet right all mm-hmm. put together and so these heads are on these little short poles and there's just like a miles of them and I one of my guides was standing there I turned around I looked at him I said so I'm looking at what because that's mm-hmm. how I talked to him mm-hmm. I said okay well come here so they he took me underground and now again I'm looking at this things like there's no dirt in front of me right at all and I mm-hmm. could see these poles going down from each of these 
heads. And in those poles then was this line of energy. It was like a tube of energy. And this tube of energy would go out and then it would splinter off and grow little arms and those little arms would grow little arms like a vein, right? You know how that does, mm -hmm. just spider webs out. Right. So I looked at him and I said, so what am I supposed to be looking at here? He said, well, well look at the energy. So I jumped into this tube, right, because it's like a conduit pipe. I looked, jumped in this tube and I'm looking at all these millions and millions and millions of little strands of light in there, hmm. all wrapped up in these tubes. And then I, I picked out a strand and I looked at it and I'm noticing that it's got these little energy bursts in it and, and they're rhythmic, these little little blips of energy flowing there, blip, 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 you know, but it's so fast that you can't really see it. So I'm watching this and I get the timing down and I jump in between two blips, <laughs> right? So I'm mm. like riding this wave of energy, right? Mm -hmm. I'm riding, I'm riding, and then pretty soon I'm looking up to see where this energy goes and like it spider webs out and there's like all these other uh, spider webs that go up or tubes of light and then I'm looking above there and I could see that they're all, each of these tubes of light, these individual tubes of light are going to the individual people. Mm. So if we've got 7 billion people, there's 7 billion little lines going out. Wow. This field of talking heads. Now wait, it gets better. This gets even better. This will be up your alley next. I'm like, okay, so where does it come from? That's point of origin. Remember that's I'm a big one on where does it come from? Where's the point of origin to this? So I follow this tube up and it goes up and up and I don't know where I am at but I am out in the galaxy somewhere and I pick my head up and I look up and I'm looking at what I would call a lab for the lack of a better way of saying it or a command center. Hmm. Everything is done whatever their computer system is or whatever it is that they're using is all this see-through glass kind of looking stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And there's these beings and they're all in these lab coats. Now, I can tell you these lab coats were probably a metaphor for my brain so that I could understand what it was that I was looking at, okay? Right. And then there's these strange-looking, semi-human-looking beings doing calculations with all these things coming up, all these tubes coming up, and they're all spitting out data. Mm. And there's another guy standing over a console, and he's doing something with all this data, and then somebody else takes up something from his machine or whatever it was, apparatus, and puts it over someplace else. So I'm mm. watching this, and I hear my guide say, um, before I go up there, they, they tell me to make sure that I mask myself because they they will be able to sense me. Mm. Wow. And, yeah, so I had to be really careful. So I got the idea that the guy that was standing in front of me at this big screen, he could sense the presence of somebody who couldn't see me, and that's when I left. And I went back down, and I said, okay, so now what am I supposed to do with all that? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, you have to disconnect the peoples. You have to disconnect the heads. Yeah, that's a good idea. So, well, it's it's easier said than done. Because I know. <laughs> you, you, you pull on the wrong one, you wake one up, and they all wake up. Well, is that bad, though? Not necessarily, yeah, that's bad. These, you oh, don't okay. want the talking heads. Are, they look like they're asleep. See, they're just doing oh, their job. I, see. I don't okay. want them to open their eyes at me. I see. Yeah. Wow. Very, 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 very interesting. No so kidding. it has... That's part of the mind control. See, it's it's this this antenna is signals that this place is sending them, right? Mm -hmm. They're transmitting yep. and receiving. And this is everything that we do is always received back somewhere else. Somebody's yep. taking a note of it. Somebody mm -hmm. is recording it, whether it be our own peoples here on this planet or other off-worlders. Mm -hmm. Correct. Scary crap. Yeah, it's really wild. Well, I, I do know they've weaponized the supernatural world, and, and they've tried to weaponize what we call light body, Merkaba. We can get into that, but I know that they've taken the, the blueprint of our, our natural celestial design work and tried to um, interface it with AI to a point where they're trying to create their own version of, of immortality through that. So that what you're describing is really fascinating. I'll tell you what, um, 
very, very curious. When you saw this galaxy or this this lab, was it was it? Did you see the exterior of it at all? Was it just no? The because I actually came up through wherever it was at. My intent was to find out where was this information going okay. and coming from. That's very interesting. So it took me to the central command place. But I will tell you, there was it was like I knew that I was in a room, but you could see no walls. Hmm. Ooh, I knew okay. that he was working on a computer, but there was no not a computer with a keyboard. He was simply doing stuff with this clear screen. I see that. Oh, yeah. So it's symbiotic, almost like living glass. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Um, because I've kind of talked about stuff like that. You know, it's just not the talking heads like that, though. But I was curious because I've seen structures like they look like the space. Um, they look like the white space stations, but they're not. They're really big and they're white. Um, but that's what I've seen before. And I've also seen something really interesting. I don't know if you've, you know, just while we're looking at stuff, um, have you ever seen thing? I saw something not too long ago about this red structure that was in space with a lot of glyphs on it, but it looked like a long slab of flat rock. It wasn't from here, but it was miles and miles and miles long. And I was wondering if you um, have any, any correlation to that. I do not at this time. Okay, let me know if you do, because I, I found it to be something significant, but I just don't know what it is. So what they're telling me is that it is significant. Okay. That doesn't mean that they won't talk to me about it. Okay. Well, well, just let me know because it was something I saw when I was viewing and it was, it went on and on and on forever. It was like, um, it's really big. So I was just curious. I've never seen anything like it. So, all right. Well, I digress, but uh, this is fascinating. Oh, no, I just no, love to talk about this. Oh you no, know? that's, that's fascinating. I love it. Yeah, me too. Because it sounds like you're on some really cool journey. So I'll tell you what though, you go on the good stuff. <laughs> I'm tripping. Yeah. I'm telling <laughs> you, you're like the sci spy. Did, the, did you ever been asked to work for the government at all or no? Uh, just the Department of Justice. Okay. It was because in you'd a, be really good. Well, uh, yeah, I would love to, honestly. I, I really would, uh, you know, to, to be of help and to be in service. I mean, that's that's one of the things that people like yourself and myself and everybody else that, you know, puts her time and energy into these shows and does all the work that we're doing. It's because you're in service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Well, it's in good. Service. We're taking down that the false matrix, but, but I like the idea of being able to navigate, you know, I don't like the confinement aspects of, you know, what's your take on frequency fences? Frequency, what? A frequency fence, something that's containing the energy of most people. Like there's some people who can't seem to astral travel at night or they feel contained energetically. Like there's a grid or there's a frequency fence uh, keeping them down. Or keep them in a false matrix, even worse than that. There's no, there's no equilibrium when they, when they decide to try to navigate. In other words, um, well, what they have to do is they have to, they have to. First of all, is they got to get past the fear. Whatever their fear is, they have to say, no matter what happens, I won't be fearful. Mm -hmm. um, you have to kind of see. Here's where our programming comes in handy for self. Mm -hmm. You can program yourself so that when you go try to get out and try to do things that you know that you will always return back to your body. Some people leave an item or an article or a light on or whatever makes them feel safe and their bed, um, you know, that's where they'll come back to. Mm -hmm. So it's something that they do so that they're, they're never disconnected from themselves. So right. that the, the first step is for them to be comfortable, to make sure that they understand that no one's going to let them just fly off in the ethers and never come back again. Mm -hmm. that's number one they, so there's a fear there that's first of all that's blocking it the other fear is what will I find when I get out there so that's a hidden fear in other words they're saying to themselves I'm brave I can do this but there's something there that's not allowing them so it mm -hmm. is a fear they yeah. have to they have to release that fear they don't necessarily have to know where that fear comes from for this endeavor it would be helpful but it's Anything would be helpful, right? But mm -hmm. they don't have to in order to get past it. They have to learn how to listen. And this is tough, to listen to those frequencies. Have you ever been under um, a bunch of uh, electrical lines and you can actually hear them talk? Yeah. Okay. That means you're listening to that energy flowing through there. Mm -hmm. Makes they sense. Have to be, they have to be able to do the same thing with what blockage it is or grid or box, whatever they perceive is around them. Mm -hmm. And they have to change that frequency sound. Makes sense. Yeah. Because that's, that's it, and usually if they listen to it, it'll be something that will be, um, it will, it will trigger an emotion. 
Mm-hmm. You know, it's like some some sounds will make you fearful and you don't even know why. Or mm-hmm. uncomfortable or creeped out or, you know, some some won't. But they have to they have to be able to listen. And even if they can't specifically hear it, there's something in their mind that allows them to know what they need to do to change the tone of that frequency so that they can move past and beyond whatever that's keeping them in that space. Mm-hmm. That makes perfect sense. That's great advice. I get a lot of people that have contacted me about that, um, that they just feel contained, that there's something going on. Now, you've done a lot of astral projection, haven't you? Yeah, I've done some, yeah. Okay, yeah. So do you still do, you still do that, or is it more uh, navigating through consciousness these days? <sighs> A little of both. Okay. Honestly, you know, I, I, I just do a lot of different things and I um, I don't seem to concentrate on just like one thing a lot and then other things on the side. It seems like just it just kind of just is there. It's kind mm-hmm. of a balance with, with both things. Right. Yeah, that makes was, sense. Was there yeah, something like you that. wanted me to look at? Is that oh, what you're asking? I, well, okay. no, I'm actually, I was curious as to what your take is on the hum. We were talking about frequencies. Um, what about the hum? Is there any, any message you get with that or, or any that of the hum, stuff people, that, see, you know, that hum is what makes me feel uncomfortable. Yeah. I, nobody likes that. I don't like it either. And, and I'm curious. And it's, yeah. It's not a fear, but I will. It, it is a fear to an extent for me because I, I because I, 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 I suspect it has insidious intent. I agree. Yeah. Okay. But I, I haven't. Whenever I've been in a, in a place where I can actually hear that hum, I'm not in a place where I can actually just sit and focus on it. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I'm doing something, going with something. I've got some place to be. I can't just stop where I'm at and just focus on it and and really pick up on that vibe and see where it comes from or where it goes to. Right. I don't know if you guys get the hum where you are, but I know that it's been hitting Colorado more, Denver. Um, it's it's starting to get more pronounced. So I was curious. And again, I think that's part of this whole construct thing that we were talking about. Yeah. And you, you brought it up as well as where the mind control, um, that's that's part of if they can manipulate that sound or manipulate an energy uh, coming out, that's, therefore you can hear this hum, right? Because they've changed the frequency of something or they've added something to it. Mm-hmm. See, I'm a... I'm a I've looked at the ley lines and the natural energy lines of the earth mm-hmm. and what has happened and it goes right along with what you were saying is that th- these natural energy lines have been um, hijacked yep. uh, by those that are, are controlling this. Um, they, ha- they can't they cannot destroy this energy, right? They can't do that. But what they can do is they can piggyback off of it and they can mm-hmm. utilize it by riding that natural stuff and then putting blocks or covering it with stuff. It's like taking and putting a coating on it so that mm-hmm. the natural energy lines are no longer visible or seen or heard or have as much power to, you know, vibrate out right. uh, because they've, they've they've cloaked it or done whatever they've done to it, you know, and I think there's just a lot of hands in the pot. Everybody asks me, that's a question I get, well, who's doing this? Who isn't doing it is better question. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, totally. Really it is. There's just too many hands. And then they've taken some of these natural lines and they've built things in the underground um, so that, that energy will flow. Um, it kind of stops then at the surface because it's going right through whatever this structure is that they might have built, and then it goes on out. So it, what it does effectively is sort of break up that natural flow of that energy from one point to the other. That's mm-hmm. the other thing they've done. Yeah, they certainly have. Well, it's dimming the frequency to some degree. It's dimming. It's toning everything down, mm-hmm. dialing it down almost. Yep. Yeah. And that's the whole idea behind the technology, see, and, and, you know, if you watch your commercials, what are the commercials feeding you? P- uh, uh, there's a whole family sitting at a table, uh, mother, father, brother, and a sister. Well, the sister, the brother comes in later. And they're all sitting there texting about this ego waffle, right? Let go of my ego. Mm-hmm. I get the waffle. Um, and they're, they're texting, and they're all standing, sitting in the same room. Mm-hmm. What they're doing uh, is they're making this as acceptable to 
have your cell phone plugged into your head all, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, you carry your tablet around. Your tablet can become your phone. It can become your computer. Uh, you're never without it. You can, you know, access it all the time. It, you know, you can listen to uh, music. You can watch movies. That's what, mm-hmm. what they're promoting it as. It's all about entertainment. It's about fun. It's about, you know, it's about the technology, the, the gadgetry. Every year you have to throw your cell phone away because it's not the latest, greatest. You've got to get the next one. Same thing with computers and, mm-hmm. you know, et cetera. It goes on and on because they just keep building more and more tech. Um, and really, we're not as close as 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 a unit as in humanity as we once were. We mm-hmm. used to get out and know our neighbors. We'd walk across the street to say hi to our neighbors. Now most people can live in a subdivision, not know anybody. That's right. Because yeah, their house sure. becomes their their whole world. It becomes their playground. It becomes everything, and nobody spends time outside. They don't spend time talking to each other. Uh, again, that's a fear thing. It's also about the technology. It's also about the programming. There's no separation. Right. Well, one of these days they're going to walk out of their virtual space, and everything's going to be simulated for them. Even the trees and the the illusion of nature. You know. I mean, I, I hope that doesn't happen, but it seems like we're heading towards that world of virtual space and almost like a holographic uh, holodeck. And, you know, I've said that before. I, I've said that before. Same thing. Mm-hmm. I've said that same thing. I, I totally agree with you on that, Solaris. I too. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love nature. So, I, I mean, I appreciate nature while I'm here. I love the feeling of, of being in tune with nature and the, the animals. So, you know, things we hold precious to our lives that pe- it seems like it's being lost along the way. And that's a shame that that's happening. But um, I would like to see these energies kind of negated. And I think that there's the galactic frequencies that are connecting in that do do that to some degree. But what is your impression of ascension energies that are connecting onto the world right now? Well, let's go back to the statement I made about the new norm and, and mm-hmm. the new energies coming back in. You know, these okay. are new energies. Uh, we, as a, as a, galaxy as a universe as a solar system we're in a di- literally in a different physical space than what we've ever been in we're going to start seeing different things than we've ever seen before in the skies i'm talking about constellations and etc and so forth because it's being oriented different because we're in a different literal physical space the planet it is uh, this planet is and so is all the other planets Everything is all shifting and moving, right? Right. Um, and so, therefore, it brings in these new energies. We've heard about this. You know, some people call this the new age uh, junk, and it's not junk. It's true. It's There is all this new energy coming in. This new energy is supportive of anybody doing this kind of work, this exploratory work, this work to break free of the mind control of the illusion and not buy into, you know, the commercialization of everything, not – Tech has its place, and again, it's about keeping the balance. It's about balancing out real life with tech life, with whatever else you're doing, right? It's about learning how to incorporate what works and what doesn't work with taking precautions anytime you use a tech. Just Mm -hmm. us sitting here today on this, you know, who knows who's listening to this? I'm not talking about just the listeners out there on uh, Freedom Slips, right? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about anybody that was able to tap into this. We don't know. We don't know mm-hmm. what's going on. I'm not going to be fearful of it. What I try to do is I try to put out that energy that, hey, uh, you know, I'm just going to be who I am, and I'm no, it's not going to be fearful about this because it is right. who I am. You got to speak your truth, and you got to know when to speak it. But all these, these, this new energy is about ascension. It's about, it's about raising the consciousness. It's about changing the programming. So you talked, you at, you said something about the. Uh, galactic energy well Mm -hmm. it's stronger now than it ever has been you know let the force be with you you know everybody thought that was kind of a a hokey statement but it was so true back then and it's so true now was that 30 years ago when that movie was made Mm -hmm. let let the force is strong in this one let the force be with you well Mm -hmm. that's what they that's really what they were talking about you know they were talking about this force this is an energy we have it each of us can own it by and you know i don't know about you but i tell you my dreams are different Mm -hmm. Um, what i what i sense is different than what it was even 10 years ago right everything gets amplified there's no doubt about that yeah universal life force energy like um on steroids it's uh, ramped up yeah yeah 
And the more of us that do this, and so here was the other discovery I made. Um, this is just my theory now um, that I made the other day when I was looking at all this. Uh, we talked about the collective consciousness. People talk about that all the time. What is the collective consciousness? Most of the time when we tap into that, we're, we're, I'm going to again go back to what I said in the very beginning of the show. It's surface level stuff. The surface level stuff is all the negative because it's expendable. So it's always regurgitating outwards, right? So it's on the outer part. If you think of it in linear terms, it's a big ball, right? Just this big sphere out there. And mm-hmm. all on the outside of this sphere is all the negative junk, garbage, and everything else. Well, when people tap into that, that's a lot of the stuff that they tap into is all that pre-programmed stuff that we keep regurgitating over and over again, lifetime after lifetime. But if mm-hmm. you can get past that stuff and you can get into the center where the where the good stuff is, you know, like the Tootsie Roll pop, right? Mm-hmm. You get into the center where the good stuff is, then you can begin to push that stuff out and reprogram what we call the collective consciousness. Get out past and beyond it. Look what's outside of it because that's where the real good stuff is. It's not necessarily what you first run into. So you have to be kind of diligent. You have to be kind of, you know, you really have to work at this. It's, for some people, it it's, would be easy. Some people, it's not. I like to give some kind of a visual context to, you know, what I'm saying. So it does help people understand what it is that I'm looking at. Right. No, I think that's excellent information. And yeah, I think a lot of people get busy in the mundane world. They get they get trapped in the false collective to some degree. And what, well, yeah, your advice is, is uh, something they should pay attention to because it really is about the inner work and what we do to deprogram ourselves from this false collective and uh, the false matrix that we've been sucked into. So, and I think a lot of us who are naturally wired for higher energies naturally know how to navigate out of it. But a lot of people, I think, get stuck. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, it, we're here to share information. We, that's what this is, is share information. Pick up the tools. If if what I say doesn't work, maybe somebody else has got a different avenue to get you there. The point is, is just get there. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Travel light, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very <laughs> light. Can. Light as you can. Exactly, because, man, the density is just, uh, yeah, we talk about gravity wells and all that other stuff that goes on. But one thing that really uh, rang true when you were talking about the, the different space-time configurations, yeah, I totally agree with that. Uh, nothing is the same as it was. Everything is totally shifted. And people, uh, it's interesting because I've been picking up on that, too, especially with our, even even things like constellations and things. Uh, nothing's right. It's like completely, yeah, it's like we took a jump. Yeah, and you know, and I have to tell you, I woke up one day, and honest God, this was this was a while back, and I woke up one day, and I just stopped in the middle of my living room, and I looked around, and I was like, something is different. This is this is all different. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's like one of those things you couldn't put your finger on because you looked, and then your couch was where it was used to be, the TV was where it was used to be, the rugs are where. But somehow it was different. Everything was different. Mm -hmm. And it stayed different. It wasn't a timeline jump. It wasn't one of those instances. It was like a permeation in everything. Everything changed. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I've seen alternate realities too. And that's that's really creepy. And that's the old house when I was living at. Um, I actually saw my bedroom, but it was a different. It was my bedroom, but there was like a box and there was things moved and, you know, lamps that weren't supposed to be there. It was just like very interesting. Yeah. Exactly. So let's let's. Have you heard about the Mandela effect? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So some of this is some of the Mandela effect. I think this is a part and parcel of of this bigger picture, which is the whole energy flux. You know everything. Um, and the biggest thing is, and I'm going to give you a really quick uh, scenario here because I know we're going to be running low on time. Uh, I had a recipe that I I made. And I put this recipe out, and a few days later, it's for bread. I make my own bread. And so mm, I made yeah. this loaf of bread. Yeah. It's fun. And I made this loaf of bread, and I had this recipe, right? So um, I made it, and we ate it up. So I, a couple of days later, I went back in, and I was making that same bread recipe because it was just a, a, just a delicious bread. I got looking at that recipe, and I thought, well, that, I'm pretty sure that isn't how I made that before. Mm. That doesn't that doesn't look right. So I asked my friend. I said, "Hey, does that look familiar to you?" And she says, "No, I don't remember that being like that." And I said, "Well, neither do I. I made it like that. The bread turned out exactly the same." Now oh. this goes on every time I make this one particular type of bread. That same recipe, it will change every time I make it. The print mm. is different. 
Wow. Without, without, is that not the most craziest thing ever? That's like that's like magic in motion right there, yeah. Yeah, and I don't surprise you know, your I, house is still in the same location. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, like wow, what is that? But it's part of the Mandela effect. What they what they termed as the Mandela effect. Mm-hmm. When did that start? Do you remember when they started terming that? I didn't hear about it until last year, sometime. I can't even okay. give you an idea of when yeah. that was exactly. I was curious about that. You know, I can remember walking into areas where things would start to vibrate and actually disappear before <gasps> my eyes. Oh, that's that's creepy too, isn't it? Yes. Oh, thank goodness you've experienced that because, man, I was like, I, I thought I was literally going to phase and go away, you know, go someplace <laughs> else. So <laughs> I probably well, would have. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. you know, for me, I'm an adventurer like that. I'm weird like that. I, I mean, I'm, I'm an astronaut at heart. I'd love to go travel and just go someplace else, you know. That's my style. But. Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, it w- it's really fun to explore, though. It really is. It's it's a lot of fun to explore. Well, I trust the universe, too. I, I do trust the, the cosmic design work versus the false matrix. So I, I know that I won't get steer, you know, they won't steer us wrong, usually, I, I would say. But um, sometimes I think we get derailed with the, this this type of a ma- matrix, what they're trying to pull us into. But it's very interesting about the bread. That just blows my mind. Yeah, that one bread recipe. So here's wow. the other thing. Keys. People uh-huh. are always losing their keys, right? Yep. So lost, lost my keys. Look around for my keys. It's one thing I never do, by the way, is lose my keys. Looking around, looking around. Had everybody in the household looking for them. Okay, I said, just forget it. Just forget it. I'll, I'm going to walk outside, and then I'll come back in, and I'll look for them. So I walked outside. I walked around the house. Came back in. There are the keys. Right where I remembered I left them the first time. Mm, right out in the open. So do you have elves or a black hole? What's going on? I don't know. Wow. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's part of a, 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 a... See, I don't know where it comes from. I don't know if it's a, a little timeline shift. I don't know if it's a little Mandela effect going on. Are they one and the same? I don't know if it's the... what I used to call it the bag of holding. Uh, my mm-hmm. little fairies would put stuff in their bag of holding and, you know, playing little tricks on you. And then they'll throw them back out there and give them back to you, whatever it was that they took or moved or what have you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's almost like what we call, you know, if you do a lot of spiritual work, there's usually like what we call ascension portals that open up. Yep. So maybe you're just opening up things into another dimensional space and they're phasing in and out. Kind of like, uh, you know, Philadelphia experiment, but not so dramatic or negative. Yeah, yeah that, that, some of that didn't have a good outcome, did it? Right. Um, and, and that, see, again, I don't know, I don't know what it is. I mean, I, it's, these are just little small spots. It's not like a whole big area where I could, you know, really tune in and look at it. But I, you know, now that you've said that. The next time I misplace something, quote unquote, I'm going to take a look and see about the energy around it to see if I can right. sense if it, you know, what actually happened at that time. Yeah, and the location, if there's a vortex or something around the house in a certain area in the house, you know, is it usually metal? That's another thing to look at, too. What is the property? Is it is it metal opposed to plastic? Because that that might be different, too. Ah, that's a good idea. I, I didn't think to, to look at the, the composition of the, of the item itself. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, I do know that when things phase in and out, I mean, just from my own experience and other people, it's usually metal for some reason or another. I don't know why, but it just is. Hmm. Well, the, it, metal has more of a vibration. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's when really it, fascinating. Yeah, it has more of a vibration than, say, a piece of plastic would. Right. Yeah, that wouldn't go anywhere. Well, we're almost out of time here. I can't believe it, Rebecca. It's so wonderful to have you on. I'm going to have to have you back. You know that. And Uh, let everybody know about your show and and how to reach out to you and and get in touch with you and all this wonderful stuff. Oh, well, first of all, I want to say thank you. Uh, I can't thank you enough for having me on. This has just been uh, just a treasure to spend time with you and have all these great conversations. I'd love to come back and I'll have to have you on a show uh, we'll have to do some projects together. That'll be fun. Oh, but yeah. for those that would like to reach me, it's journeyswithrebecca.com. And I'm on Monday night, 7 p.m. Central Time, 7 to 9 p.m. Central Time every Monday night. Um, you can hear me on Studio B right here at freedomslips.com. It's also uh, broadcast from wolfspiritradio.com. Uh, if you go to my website, there's a free newsletter uh, link on the left side of the page. Uh, you can sign up for it. 
Uh, I send out information on my guests, the topics, as well as classes and events or any other special information. I usually try to send them out a couple times a month so you're not inundated with it. Uh, but you can go in there. I've got archives on my website. Of my books are for sale. It also tells you how to sign up for reading all the different readings and sessions and classes that I do uh, put on. All that's available to you on my website. That's journeyswithrebecca.com. That's wonderful. And of course, I, I have to listen to your show more often when I have time, my goodness, because I love your information and I love your work. So I'm very, very pleased to have you on. And yeah, I'd love to be doing any kind of project with you. So thank you again for joining us. I want to thank everybody for the great questions in chat, by the way. That was really awesome. Yeah, and, cool. Uh, was really switched on. People are paying attention there. And, and please stay tuned for Shiny Side Out coming up here with David Dunger and Becky coming up to sail you on into the night from down under, as they always do with their fantastic show. Apparently, they're talking about the quantum mind tonight. So that syncs up with what we've been discussing tonight, yeah. Rebecca. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, talk about synchronicity there. We have about a minute here, plus or minus. Anything you want to leave the listeners with tonight? Well, you know, I think uh, the overall thing here is we've talked a lot about energies. We've talked a lot about timeline shifting and uh, we've talked a little bit about the construct and everything it's really about people focusing in on themselves the learning how to open up or learning how to listen um, and you know making sure that you really protect yourself when you go somewhere uh, be very conscious and aware of your surroundings and the people that you're with so that you can better protect not only yourself but your loved ones as well so you're not bringing home stuff that doesn't belong to them either. Uh, we're all in this game together and we're all here to help each other and anything that we can do to help each other is always a good day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well said. That's great advice right there. Yeah, it is kind of a game, isn't it? When you look at it. It is. Yeah. And with that being said, we're out of time here. Well, thank you, Rebecca. It's a pleasure. Thank you, honey. You, yeah, and thank, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Have a great week, everybody. Be safe out there. Good night. Good night.